Good morning. So let me tell you how I came to be standing on this stage today. It started at a recent AWEA Executive Committee meeting when a debate ensued between me and a gentleman by the name of Chris Brown. Many of you may know Chris. He is the president of Vestas. And the topic of our debate was offshore wind in the United States. Now, Chris was not a believer that offshore wind growth was imminent in the US. And I can't be objective with regard to a determination on who may have won this debate, but I did get invited here today to share my views with you. I did call Chris and ask his permission to share this story with you, and he graciously agreed, but with one condition. Let me allow, introduce you to Super Chris. Doesn't he make a great Superman? All right, so let me explain why I believe the time for U.S. offshore is now. The momentum is clear. These are just a few recent media headlines. There are RFPs currently pending in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Rhode Island and New York will issue auctions later this year. New York is committed to 2,400 megawatts of offshore by 2030, and New Jersey is committed to 3,500 megawatts in the same timeline. Numerous other states have signaled their intent to participate. Policymakers and permitting agencies are finally aligned. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is committed to timely processing of required permits, and new leases have been announced off Massachusetts and New York. Perhaps most importantly, offshore wind in the northeastern markets is cost competitive. The combination of existing RPS targets, load growth, and announced retirements of base load generation will require an incremental 25,000 megawatts of clean energy resources by 2025. There simply is not enough open real estate in these regions to accommodate that level of growth. And as a renewable energy developer, our team can tell you getting anything developed and permitted in the Northeast is extremely difficult. This means that many of the onshore options are located long distances from the load, requiring high voltage transmission build at a cost of billions of dollars and nearly unimaginable permitting uncertainty. With offshore, we avoid much of this. Offshore brings the capability of injecting abundant amounts of renewable energy directly into the heart of these large load centers, avoiding the transmission congestion of many of the onshore alternatives. Offshore wind is not new. It is a tested, proven technology. There are more than 17,000 megawatts in operation today, more than 4,000 more under construction in Europe and now in Asia. The levelized cost of energy has steeply declined in these markets, and new technology will help to ensure this downward trend continues here. Valuable lessons have been learned in these markets, which the United States will be able to immediately benefit from. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words, so let me share with you a very short video. Goosebumps. 
Offshore brings high capacity factor energy, often strongly correlated with high demand conditions. A recent study demonstrated an 800 megawatt facility would have generated at full capacity during nearly the entire bomb cyclone storm that pummeled New England over a four day period this past January. Just over these four days, this project would have provided enough lower cost electricity to reduce wholesale prices by nearly $20 a megawatt hour and would have avoided emissions equivalent to removing more than 14,000 cars from the road for an entire year. Based, inefficient, emission intensive generators that the grid operator had no choice but to deploy to maintain reliability. Offshore brings the promise of a new industry with quality jobs and economic development to struggling ports and neighboring communities. By way of example, a recent UK initiative that will support 30 gigawatts is estimated to create 27,000 quality jobs and spur investment of more than $60 billion in UK infrastructure. These massive, amazing machines that are honestly a feat of human engineering capability reliably generate clean energy largely out of sight. And with close collaboration with wildlife agencies and local fishermen, offshore in Europe, for the most part, has been a welcome addition to the marine environment. You may have recently heard someone refer to offshore wind in the US as a moonshot. Well, we don't need to go to the moon. We just need to go about 20 miles offshore, where the view of the moon is spectacular. And if I am right about the future of offshore wind in the United States, perhaps this is the next superhero we will meet. The signals are clear. The time for offshore wind in the United States is now. And Avant Grid Renewables is looking forward to participating in this exciting new American industry. Thank you.